to reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the other great shows that previously aired, log on to dentallyspeaking.com or iTunes, keywords Dr. Kabitko or Dentally Speaking. Listeners should not use Dr. Kabitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kabitko. Time now for Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kabitko to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kabitko. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dentally Speaking. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I really do. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this show for, this is the 371st episode. So um, it's really nice to know that you're out there and you're listening. And uh, especially those people that used to tune in when we were on at a different time slot. And now you've found me, I hear. So that's cool. Keep in mind that we always do a Dr. Kavitko question of the day each week. And that comes up in about 10, 12, 13 minutes or so. And we give people a chance to win free flowers. Today's show is kind of, I was going to say, is near and dear to my heart, but really what it is is it's become a real pain in the you-know-what. And I think if there are other dentists listening or dental office personnel, pay attention because you're welcome to call in and uh, chime in, okay? Because the topic of, uh, t- of discussion today is cracked tooth syndrome. And when I say it's become a pain in my you-know-what, it's because this is one of the toughest things to know. Not that we... We can, we can easily know that this is what the person is dealing with, but here's the problem. We don't really know uh, what the best course of treatment is. Well, we kind of do, but we say, well, we can do this, but if it's, this doesn't work, we can do that, and if that doesn't work, we do this. And guess what? With every step, there's a charge to the patient, and although we explain it over and over and over again to people, this is the problem we're facing. If, for some reason, we've done a root canal on the tooth to try to solve your pain, and then we discover after the fact that your tooth still needs to be extracted, well, guess what? Naturally, everybody thinks the root canal then should be refunded, the cost of the root canal. But the only way to know if we can save your tooth is to try. So if you're a dentist and you understand this, like I said, feel free to give a call and chime in. It's 459-9769. All right, so as I mentioned, to adopt the topic of today is the cracked tooth syndrome. Oh, and let me also remind folks, if you want to watch the show, you can go to dentallyspeaking.com right now. And in the upper right-hand corner, where there's like a bluish panel that says that the show is live um, 8.30 on, on Sundays, which is, you know, that time is not necessarily correct. <laughs> and it does not look like a clickable link. But if you hold your mouse over it and click on it, it'll bring it up and you can watch. And it's kind of cool because we're going to be scrolling photographs of various cracked teeth, different things that we'll be talking about, will be seen. You can also go to UStreamTV.com. That's U with a U, not a Y-O-U. UStreamTV.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. It's a very nondescript word watch down there. It doesn't even look like uh, they want you to watch, but you do. They do. <laughs> so you click on watch. Type in Dentally Speaking into the search bar, and we'll come up, and you'll see us over there because we're broadcasting right now. Okay. And you know what? Something else. You can follow me at uh, on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko, and our office Facebook page is Facebook forward slash Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Okay, so let's talk about cracked tooth syndrome. We're going to give you information about what it is, tips on how you know you have it, what to do if you do have it, and the ramifications of your different choices for treatment. And that's the part that I was kind of alluding to, but okay. So cracked tooth syndrome, and uh, I I looked at several articles about it, and they're all pretty much the same. But It's also known as CTS. Everybody likes abbreviating these days. CTS for cracked tooth syndrome or cracked cusp syndrome. Someone else calls it split tooth syndrome or incomplete fracture of posterior teeth. All right? It's where a tooth has an incomplete crack, but no part of the tooth has yet broken off. So sometimes it's referred to as a green stick fracture, you know? And the symptoms are very variable, making it notoriously difficult uh, as a condition for us to diagnose. So it's kind of a type of dental trauma and also one of the possible causes of dental pain. So one definition of cracked tooth syndrome is a fracture plane of unknown depth and direction passing through tooth structure that, if not already involving, may progress to communicate with the pulp and or periodontal ligament. Okay, so people come, here's the symptoms that people get, and they vary. They're all over the place, really. So sharp pain when biting on a certain tooth, 
which may get worse if the applied biting force is increased. Sometimes the pain on biting occurs when food is being, that, that's being chewed is even soft or soft with harder elements, such as seeded bread. So the bread may not cause you the pain, but when you hit a seed, it does. Rebound pain, that is sharp, fleeting pain occurring when the biting force is released from the tooth, which may occur when eating fibrous food. So it doesn't hurt when you bite, but it hurts when you release the bite. Another one would be pain when grinding your teeth backwards and forwards or side to side. Another would be sharp pain when drinking cold beverages or eating cold foods and lack of pain from heat. So if you have hot coffee, it doesn't hurt, but you have a cold drink, it might. Pain when eating or drinking sugary substances. Now typically, pain when eating something sweet, you think of as a cavity, but it can also be a cracked tooth. Sometimes the pain is well localized and the individual is able to determine the exact tooth from which the symptoms are or originating, but not always. Isn't that something? So it's really, really tricky, first of all, because it can be so many other things. And by the way, if the crack does make its way into the pulp, it becomes irreversible pulpitis or pulpal necrosis, also known as pulpal death. And it can be periapical periodontitis, which is uh, infection in the gum tissues, the tissues that attach your tooth to the bone down towards the root tip. And if that develops, you get those respective, asso respective associated symptoms. Okay? So, <clears throat> now think about it. If you have a toothache right now, think about all these different things that we just said. Sugary, releasing your bite, biting, grinding. There's so many things that it could be. And honestly, there's even a case where this patient who was in the hospital... He had been complaining of headache pains or head pain for a year and a half or so, and no doctor could figure it out. And then finally, they said, well, we're going to have to do exploratory brain surgery. And they had uh, shaved the person's head. Uh, I don't know if they shaved the whole head or just the one side or whatever, but they, he was scheduled in the, at the kind of at the last minute, the day before surgery, uh, the doctor said, you know what, let's, let's, let's call for an oral surgery consult. Let's call an oral surgeon in just to make sure it's not a tooth. And the oral surgeon came in, discovered it was a cracked tooth, extracted the tooth, the gentleman's pain went away, and did not need brain surgery. It's really, really, it's really, really, this, it's esoteric. It's really hard to put your finger on this stuff. Okay. So, if you have it, though, you have to, well, somebody has to figure out, you know, we have to figure out, do you have this? What is it? Do you have it? And what are we going to do about it? So, what happens a lot... So people come in and they say, I've got this pain. And, and the way we try to figure it out is we'll put, our pr we'll put pressure on the tooth. I'll take my thumb and I'll try to push the tooth outward. And by the way, it's usually a molar, the lower first and second molars, the upper molars, and, and bicuspids. It's usually a chewing tooth. So when we say cracked tooth, we're not talking about the one that got broken when you chipped it as a kid uh, falling down the steps or playing softball or something, which if those balls were so soft, they shouldn't chip your teeth, right? But anyway... So it's a, you come in, you have this, this pain, and, and we're trying to figure it out. So I will push on the tooth sideways. I'll push inward. I'll push outward. I'll push down, push the tooth further down into the gum and bone. We'll tap on the teeth, try to figure out if one reacts more than the other. We will use what's called a tooth sleuth, which looks like a toothbrush handle with no bristles. It looks like somebody bought a toothbrush and cut off all the bristles. It has a little bit of a projection on it, and we put it on one cusp or another of the, uh, of the tooth, and we ask the person to kind of bite on it, and it puts some pressure on this cusp or puts some pressure on that cusp, and sometimes we can recreate the pain. So these teeth come in, you know, cracked tooth syndrome, it's a syndrome, it's not obvious. So we, people aren't walking in the door with a tooth that's obviously split, although if you look at some of the photographs on our, our video stream, you'll see that some of them do eventually show up as clearly broken. But those are the ones where people say, my tooth is broken, I know it's broken, and they come in. So, um, anyway, so we have, uh, we have we, we're, we're trying to figure this out, and once we suspect that you have a cracked tooth, I'll also do what's called a, um, I'll also do a pulp test, and a pulp test will tell me if the nerve is alive or dead. If the nerve is dead, I know for sure you're going to need a root canal. Okay. But I still don't know if you have a cracked tooth. And even if I did, I don't really know yet just how badly it's cracked. Because if it's a green stick fracture, if it's really not completely separated, 
Well, what do we do? We want to hold that tooth together somehow to keep it from breaking in half, breaking the rest of the way. But I don't know that yet because let's say, um, in fact, this can even happen on virgin teeth, teeth that have never had a filling or a cavity for that matter. And guess what? X-rays don't show this. They almost never show it. Why is that? All right, well, picture, if you could picture tweezers. Okay, you know how the tweezers and there's like two pieces and you squeeze them together? Well, if you turn the tweezers sideways, you don't see that there's another side to it. But if you turn them one in the other direction, you can see through. You can see that opening between the two parts of your tweezers. Well, typically, the, ex the, uh, the teeth crack in a plane that would not be visible on the x-ray because it would be that view that I was saying where you have the tweezers turned in that direction, where it just looks like one tweezer. Not tweezers, but one tweezer. <laughs> one little nib. Okay? So x-rays, unless the crack is huge and it's in the correct plane, they don't show. It doesn't show up on an x-ray. It's really unfortunate because we'd love to know in advance what we're getting into. And if we knew in advance that this tooth was cracked so badly that even a root canal in the crown were not going to work, then we wouldn't go through those steps. But the point is, is it's almost impossible to know that. So x-rays do not show cracks, or rather, every once in a while, but for the most part, they do not. Okay, so x-rays, we're going to take it anyway because we're hoping, but for the most part, they don't help us at all. Okay, so as I mentioned, we do a Dr. Kavitko's question of the day every day, every week, and we're going to do that in just a moment. But before we do, we want you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And when you smile, I will smile. And next time when I look in your eyes, we'll have wings and we'll fly. When you smile, I will smile. And next time when I look in your eyes. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko. Vitko's question of the day. Okay, now, the question of the day is, oh, let me remind people, you're going to win free flowers from Vice Number Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. And the question today is a true-false question. True or false, it is more likely for a crack in your teeth to not show up on an x-ray than it is for a crack to actually be seen on an x-ray. Okay, is that true or false? The winner receives free flowers from Vice Number Florist, delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 459-9769. That's 459-9769. So go ahead and call now. Stay tuned to Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. At Dr. Kavitko & Associates, a lot of people ask us if we're accepting new patients. They know we've been in business for 34 years and assume we're not. Well, guess what? They're wrong. We do accept new patients. After all, if we're doing our job correctly, we get our patients healthy, so all they need are routine exams, cleanings, and the occasional filling or two. That leaves us free to take care of you. So yes, we do take new patients, and we would love to take care of you, your family, and your friends. Give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. I bet everyone knows someone who is afraid of the dentist. In fact, 40% of Americans don't go to the dentist on a regular basis. The number one reason? Fear. Well, take heart. Here at Dr. Kavitko & Associates, we've been doing intravenous sedation since 1985, and we offer several sedation options, so we're certain we can help you. Want to be sedated for a filling? We do that. Want to be sedated for a cleaning? We do that. How about a root canal or a crown? We can sedate you for those, too. Give us a call at 614-262-9588, or go to drkavitko.com. Estás escuchando Dental Speaking con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su estación favorita. Baby, your smile's forever in my mind and memory. I'm thinking about how people fall in. All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have four callers on the line. We have Joey, Garrett, Linda, and Tom. Let's go with Joey first to see if Joey has the correct answer. Are you there? 
It's actually Kelly. Kelly. Sorry about that, <laughs> Kelly. Okay. So, what's the answer? Do you remember? I say it's true. It is true. It's true that it's x-rays that almost never show a crack. Right? Okay. Right. So, so, Kelly, what do you do for a living? I work at the Laurels of Worthington. I'm an activity assistant. Oh, neat. So you help the, the folks. You make sure that they have things to do during the day. Yeah, I'm the little woman on the totem pole there. <laughs> but you know what that means? That means you're holding everybody else up. See? Right. Yeah, think about that. Low man on the totem pole is the most important one, right? Because they're holding people up. Anyway, hey, stay on the line because we're going to get the information from you to make sure you get those flowers. And everybody, Garrett, hey, call back next week. Linda, Tom, and thank you for calling this week, but call back next week, okay? Okay. All right, so we'll give that information back to my producer so he can get that info. All right, so if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is Stanley Speaking, and today we are discussing cracked tooth syndrome. We're actually welcoming uh, dental office personnel to call in, especially dentists, if you've had these kind of experiences, because I think we can all commiserate that this is one of the toughest things that we do in trying to do the right thing for our patients. So, for example, I don't want to take out a tooth that doesn't need removed, but I know that if I do a root canal on a tooth that is cracked and I didn't know it was cracked and the person loses the tooth, they're not going to be happy because they've paid for a root canal. And by the way, uh, sometimes we can do the root canal on the tooth and we can put a crown on it and it's fine, fine for years and years, fine forever. And then sometimes it's like, oh, the tooth never really felt right. In fact, in the literature I was looking up, I found that there are cases where a tooth that has cracked tooth syndrome, even after the root canal and even after the crown, it still hurts sometimes, some of the time. And a lot of times people aren't actually interested in, in uh, they don't want to have all that work done and spend all that money if the tooth isn't going to be perfectly comfortable, you know, all the time, which I understand, but we're dealing with one of these things that is really, really hard to deal with. Now, to be, uh, let me just explain that the, the pain, the pain actually comes that when you're biting down, and let's say your tooth is cracked, and you're biting down, and so in essence you kind of have two segments. So the segments are usually moving apart and thereby reducing the pressure in the nerves in the dentin of the tooth. When the bite is released, the segments snap back together, sharply increasing the pressure in the intradentinal, intradentin nerves causing that pain. The pain is often inconsistent, frequently hard to reproduce, but if untreated, Crack tooth syndrome, again, also known as CTS, can lead to severe pain, possible pulpal death, that's the, uh, the nerve inside, abscess, and even loss of the tooth. Okay? So, you know, if you, I guess, here's what I'm going to say. If you think you have a toothache, or if you know you have a toothache, not think, you probably should get to us sooner than later. Come to your dentist sooner than later, because if it's an early crack, no problem. We just literally, we just put a crown on it, hold it together, and you never have an issue. I've got people out there that I've done this for 20, 30 years ago, and they've never had an issue, really. And there were some teeth that when I looked at the photographs, I thought, oh, I don't know about this. I bet you're going to need a root canal. Well, let's start with this. And we started with that, and it was no big deal. But there are these others where by the time the person comes in, well, here's one. Okay, so, and by the way, if you're looking on, on if you're watching live on, uh, on Ustream TV or dentallyspeaking.com, and I'll just remind you, if you want to watch, go to dentallyspeaking.com, uh, uh, click on, on the home page. there's a panel that says what time the show is. It's actually incorrect because we're on it uh, four times now, but I guess it's three times. But, uh, but anyway, uh, click on that, and you'll be able to see me broadcasting live. And there's some pictures scrolling by. There's about 20 different images of various uh, cracked teeth, as, all, as well as some explanations about how teeth crack. So, uh, in fact, I want to mention one of those. One of those, I mentioned this can happen to virgin teeth, which is true, and it's happened to several virgin teeth. But it can also happen to teeth that have had fillings. So if you have a filling, picture a silver filling in your tooth, and if you look at it from the side, you kind of cut the, if you did a sectional view, the filling is almost the shape of a wedge. So think of the uh, filling as driving a wedge into your tooth, separating it in half. Well, uh, not only is it kind of doing that, but also now what you have is a separation between cusps. So when you bite down and the cusp of the one tooth touches the cusp of the other, it can kind of, as you go sideways, as you chew, it puts pressure on that cusp and actually causes it to flex. Okay, and it kind of moves out a little bit. And 
when and that's what we find when we put the tooth sleuth in, you know, when somebody comes in and they're saying, I got this toothache, I don't really know what it is, and I'm looking at the x ray and I don't see an abscess, I don't see a cavity. Okay, now I'm suspecting cracked tooth, but I don't know where the crack is. So, what I need to do in some cases is I need, once I suspect that, I say, okay, I might say, John, I think you have a cracked tooth. I can't see a cracked tooth. I've taken a close up, I've taken a close up photograph. I've taken an x-ray. I don't see anything, but I suspect it. So here's what we want to do. We're going to numb you, with your permission, of course. We're going to take out the filling, and we're going to look. We're going to actually look. Take out the filling, any of the old cement bases, you know, any stain, and we're going to look, and we're going to take a close-up photograph of the area inside. And then, if we don't see a crack, well, now we have to wonder, because you're getting pain for some reason. But if I don't see a crack, then I have to suspect that you have a little craze line, a little green stick fracture somewhere, and I'm going to say, let's hold that tooth together with something like a crown that's going to give it support so maybe it'll stop moving. But there's still a chance that your tooth, that your crack is so far in and I still can't see it, that your nerve is going to die. So you might need a root canal too. Okay? So now we have to decide, are we just going to do the crown? Are we going to do the root canal too? Or are we going to, uh, are we going to say, hey, sometimes when we have a cracked tooth and we do a root canal and we do a crown, people still lose the tooth. So do you want me just to take your tooth out and let's talk about an implant? Because it really comes down to the risk tolerance of the patient. And there aren't, you know, there are lots of instances, I guess, in this with, um, in the medical field. But in the dental field, there really aren't that many cases where we have to be so vague or we're not really vague. We just don't know. All right, I see we're up against a break. We need to go to a break. You're listening to Dentally Speaking. I'm Dr. Kavitko. We're talking about cracked tooth syndrome, and we'll be talking more about that when we return. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. State ascoltando Dentally Speaking con il dottor Kavitko. Qui sulla vostra radio preferita. Here at Dr. Kavitko and Associates, we are intensely dedicated to providing the absolute best dental care. The word mediocre isn't in our vocabulary. We just won't take shortcuts. Isn't that what you want in the person you trust with sharp objects in your mouth? Of course it is. However, people tend to assume high quality means expensive. But guess what? We're more affordable than you think. Our fees are about the same as one of those chains. But with us, you get our 34 years of experience and our unwavering commitment to quality. Discover for yourself. Call us at 614-262-9588. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the Dentally Speaking Show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now or send an email to drkavitko at aol.com. Brighten your life with a smile that shows teeth crooked and while you would like them straight there's no way you would wear braces for two years what if i told you that you could straighten your teeth in six months between now and your next cleaning would you be interested call us today at 614-262-9588 i'm grandpa and i go to dr convicto and i still have all my teeth real ones where's my glasses Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is Dentally Speaking. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for staying with us, actually. We are talking about cracked tooth syndrome today, giving you information about what it is, tips on how to know you have it, what to do if, what to do, if you do, and the ramifications of your different choices for treatment. So remember, cracked tooth syndrome is one of those really tough things. And um, let's talk about a virgin tooth, for example. How can you get a cracked tooth if it's never had a filling, never broken? Well, people tend to grind their teeth at night. They don't know they do it. In fact, every time I see, and I, I see this, we'll, and every dentist does, we see where teeth used to have points on them and they're ground down flat. And I'll say to the person, you must be grinding your teeth when you sleep. And they'll go, no, I don't. <laughs> it's like, well, unless you're taking a file and doing it while you're awake, you must be doing it when you're asleep. And they'll still say, no, I don't. But anyway, I take pictures of every tooth that's ever come in the door, um, at least for the last decade, 
And so I can chronicle this and I can, I take pictures. And so in, uh, somebody comes in, maybe comes in today and then five years from now we take other pictures and it's like, well, look, it used to be pointy and now it's all flat. So, but in the process of grinding those teeth, in the process of running your, your teeth across each other, you can put lateral forces on the cusps of these teeth because a bicuspid has two cusps, an inside one and an outside one. And when that bottom tooth catches the outside cusp and as you're moving outward, well, you're pushing the outside cusp out. And as you move inward, you're pushing the inward cusp inward. Okay, so you're kind of you're flexing it. And teeth are like glass. They don't really flex all that well. Enamel especially doesn't flex all that well. Okay, so let me just kind of recap because we're not saying that anybody that gets a toothache and anybody whose dentist suspects you have cracked tooth syndrome, that your wisest choice to make would be to have your tooth extracted because many, many, many of these teeth, in fact, I would say 90% of these teeth are savable and are saved with no post-op discomfort. But about 10% of them, and this is just my quick math, you've heard, probably heard the phrase that, uh, what is it, like 92% uh, of all statistics are made up on, on the site? <laughs> made up on the mic. <laughs> and so when I say 90% or 10% that uh, eventually wind up needing extracted, that can be very, very painful to ever, for everybody involved. Because, you know, root canals aren't inexpensive. They're about $1,200 on a molar. So if you've just paid for root canal, and now we tell you in a month or so your tooth needs extracted, you're not a happy camper. Okay, but I guess what I'm saying is, is um, if it were my tooth, I would want it saved. I'd want to do everything that I could to keep my tooth because I know that, first of all, it's better to have the original equipment. It always is. Nothing that we do that's artificial is ever as good as what God gave you. And the other is, it's always cheaper to save your own tooth. Always, always, always. It doesn't matter that a root canal is expensive or a crown is expensive or a buildup is expensive and the x-ray was expensive in, in your mind. What matters is, is the end result, if you save your tooth, is still cheaper to save your tooth than it is if you have it out. Okay? And that's, that's true in every case. Because if you have it out... Oh, uh, let me just point out. Now you've got the short-term thing, where you, um, you know, it's short-term, so you're thinking, well, heck, an extraction's only 150 bucks, and I paid for the x-ray, so no big deal. But you have to factor in getting a bridge, getting an implant and a crown on it, or getting um, a removable partial denture. Because if you don't fill in the space, pretty soon you have all of these um, other teeth starting to shift around, and now you're not biting right, and you're, you're putting more pressure on the other teeth, and it's not healthy, not at all. And it's not something that we recommend ever. I wouldn't do it in my mouth. I wouldn't want you to do it in yours. So don't compare the price, please. Don't compare that the price... Um, prices to, you know, the cost of like sitting right there, what's the cheapest today? Okay, you'll do yourself a big favor, but be open-minded and realize that there are some things the dentist just can't know in advance, and you're just going to have to take your chances, okay? Okay, and I think you'll be better off, I think your dentist will be better off, I know I'll be better off, and I'll feel a lot better about, you know, making sure that we're doing the right thing for you. Okay, looks like that's all the time we have. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko. Again, our office Facebook page is Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Next week, we will have Dr. Paul Casamassimo, the Director of Children's Dentistry for Nationwide Children's Hospital, as well as the Ohio State University College of Dentistry. Be sure to join me next Sunday and every Sunday morning right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week for another exciting episode of Dentally Speaking with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to dentallyspeaking.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you would like to book Dr. Kavitko to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or send an email to drkavitko at dentallyspeaking.com. That's D-R-K-V-I-T-K-O at dentallyspeaking.com. WSA.